Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you shocked your creation by raising your son Jesus from the dead. Then you raised him on the day of ascension to heaven. Gather each of us that ultimately we may find ourselves where Jesus has led the way, that we might know his glory face to face. Amen. Today is often referred to as Ascension Sunday. The church has historically used Luke's version of the events after Jesus' death to set the church's calendar. Luke tells us that 40 days after Jesus' resurrection, God raised Jesus once again, this time into heaven. Now, 40 days after Easter Sunday is always a Thursday. So Ascension Day was last Thursday. And today, the following Sunday, we hear about the Ascension. Luke also tells us that 10 days after Jesus' Ascension, the disciples experienced the coming of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which we will celebrate next Sunday. So, today in our reading from the Acts of the Apostles, which, by the way, is written by the same author as the Gospel of Luke. Our reading is of Jesus' ascension into heaven. Several things strike me about Luke's version of the ascension. First of all, there's a conversation going on. The apostles are asking Jesus just like they did when Jesus was alive, they're asking Jesus about the future. Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? It makes sense to me that they would ask because that's what they thought would happen before Jesus died, and then he died and all seemed lost. Now, their interaction with Jesus is something for which they have no frame of reference. There is no precedent for having a conversation with one who has died. So you can imagine the disciples thinking, certainly now is the time, right? And I love Jesus' response. It is not for you to know the time. It seems that for all those who have tried to solve the mystery of the book of Revelation, they must have missed this simple line. Because every one of those who have predicted the end was coming, well, they've been wrong. If Jesus himself tells us it's not for us to know, I wonder what makes someone think they can know. Something else that surprises me about this scripture is the words of the two men in white robes. Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up to heaven? Come on. I mean, I got I to gotta cut the disciples some slack here. Because if I had seen anyone, but especially my Lord and teacher, raised up into heaven, you better believe I'm going to be standing there looking up. <laughs> Probably with my mouth hanging open. And I'm going to stand there for a really long time wondering if gravity is finally going to kick in. Seems a little terse to me to scold the poor guys for doing exactly what any one of us would be doing. 
The apostles also hear from the two men that Jesus is indeed coming back. But they won't say when. Jesus has left. Now what? The disciples may be in a quandary about what is next, but they're not in the place that they were when they had when Jesus seemed to leave them when he was on the cross, right? They were they were lost, they were in hiding, broken hearted. <clears throat> Jesus has returned and Jesus has told them something about their future. <clears throat> they are to be witnesses. Witnesses of all that they have seen and heard. Witnesses to how Jesus has changed their lives. That is the point of the Easter celebration. Jesus has changed our lives. Nathan Jennings, <clears throat> professor of liturgics at the Seminary of the Southwest, writes this story. <clears throat> I remember once waiting with my two-year-old son for my wife, his mother, to come home after being gone most of the day. We were on the back porch playing together when he heard his mother's car pull into the driveway. He stopped everything. He looked up, his eyes widened, And I thought that he would run to the driveway and that I would have to chase after him. He did not. He simply started spinning around and around, spinning for sheer joy. Mama was home. He said it was a celebration I couldn't help but join. as we are reminded by the two men in the white robes. As Christians, we are waiting for someone to arrive. And every time we share the Eucharist, we celebrate that arrival. Our lives are too busy We get caught up in all the things there are to do. There's always something else to do. But if our end, our ultimate purpose is celebration, perhaps celebration is also the best place for us to begin. Children are so much better at celebration, aren't they? We were better at celebration at our beginning. When we return to the Eucharist, week in and week out, we recall that Christ will come again. When we celebrate all the ways that the joy of God makes itself known in our lives, even when we least expect it. We become the kind of people who can thrive and contribute in our shared pilgrimage through this passing world. When we can see the joy of God in the spinning of a two-year-old boy, We become the kind of people who can, with unveiled eyes, behold the coming of our Lord at the Eucharistic feast. We are a people who each and every week can see the joy and behold the presence of our God right here. We celebrate the Eucharist, celebrate together. 
with those we know and love. We celebrate, too, with strangers. We even celebrate with though a few we might wish we didn't know. And in that moment, we know that Jesus is among us, that Jesus is come again. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Today, we also get to celebrate the wonderful and amazing Ann Bacchus and her gift of ministry to this community. For 25 years, she has formed our children to know themselves as children of God, known by God, loved by God. For longer than that, many of us who are not children have experienced her love and care and compassion for this community of faith. And so today, let us celebrate and keep that feast. Alleluia.